Hey, sports fans, Larry Eater here. I'm with Anna Hall. Anna Hall is the bronze medalist from the World Championships in the heptathlon. She's a new Adidas-sponsored athlete, NCAA champion. Anna, hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Great. And thank you for uh, coming back. I had tried to do a recording with you and forgot to push the record button last time. So thank you for your patience and uh, glad you're okay in this crazy hurricane right now. Yeah, of course. And yeah, glad that um, Gainesville got lucky. So yep. yeah, is now have you started training again yet? I have. Um, yep. So yeah, just getting back into the swing of things. And how much time did you take off? Um, I took about four weeks, like completely away from track. Um, uh -huh. And then after that, I did six weeks of pretty much only in the weight room, um, swimming, like cross training, just like light fitness, keeping the body in shape but still a break from track um and then this past week was my first week um after that six weeks of starting kind of um real track and field training again so back into the olympic lifts some throwing and hurdling and etc so how is it feeling coming back um it's good i've missed it i am one of those people i don't like to be away for too long so i was nagging uh -huh. coaches during my last six week cycle like <laughs> can i throw outside yet can i do this and they're like no 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 um, so I'm ha just happy to finally get a few yeses and, um, I know they're still holding some things back for later, but, um, yeah, just happy to be back outside. Is there going to be difference in your program now that you're a professional athlete? Are you keeping the same culture and system? Um, yeah, it will be the same coaches, same culture. Um, I would say the difference is going to be that, um, the timing of things like starting a little bit later versus if I was still in college, I would have, they would have said yes um, a while ago uh -huh. um, just because of the schedule of the season is going to look a little bit different, but yeah, no, other than that, it's pretty much going to be um, very similar, but maybe just a little bit of a heightened focus on peaking for certain meets. Um, then when you're competing in the NCAA, you kind of peak all season long. So will we see you compete at indoor uh, championships as well? Yes. Um, I know indoor worlds has got canceled or moved, yeah. um, but I will still compete indoors. And so we're, I'm still working with my agents and coaches to finalize a schedule, but um, we'll definitely do at least one, if not two pentathlons um, and maybe one overseas. So yeah. Cool. Awesome. And uh, your agent is Paul Doyle. Yes. Yeah. He's a good guy. He's one of my faves. So it's fun to talk track with him. Because he yeah, really gets he knows it. a lot. <laughs> so I want to go back and spend a little time about this amazing season that you've had. You won the NCAA indoor. You won the NCAA outdoor. What was fascinating to me about the outdoor was that you also did the hurdles. I, I wanted to take a little time on that. The, the, the heptathlon is tough enough. And then you're doing the 400 hurdles, which I think is one of the toughest events in the sport. Paul, you've picked some challenges. Do you like them both? Yeah, um, I really like um, both of them. Um, yeah, I know it is funny that I, for some reason, have just been drawn to like the hard things in track, um, 400 hurdles, 800 heptathlon. Um, so I don't really know why that is, but I really like um, 400 hurdles and I always wanted to try it. Mm -hmm. um, I ran 300 hurdles in high school because um, they had that like during our high school season and um, always enjoyed that. So I was happy that um, Coach Holloway agreed to let me try it outdoors. And then we were like, oh, OK, like maybe we want to keep doing this. And um, so, yeah, that was really fun. And I think it's going to be a really cool event just to have in my back pocket when I don't want to compete in a heptathlon um, every week as a pro that um, I can go get almost a good 800 workout in um, mm -hmm. by running. 400 hurdles rep. I remember talking to Dan O'Brien at the end of a decathlon. He absolutely hated the 1500. Some people thrive on it. I know Jackie could keep, Joanna Kersey could keep herself focused. You seem to thrive on that 800. What is it about the 800 that you like? You see, that's, I would, I'm also in the camp where like I don't enjoy it because it okay. hurts, but I guess it helps me. So I like that. Um, but I guess the part of it that I do like is that I feel like it's really a, grit and like toughness battle and it's I mean the end of six events and everybody's exhausted and so it's like kind of just one last test uh, my dad calls it like a gut check just to see like who has the most hard and who's been working really hard and I think the endurance events can be pretty exposing or um, sometimes of it'll show you like wow you've really been putting the work in or oh maybe 
um, you need to work on that a little bit. And so uh, I think it's like the perfect way to end the multi, even though it's super, super painful. Um, but yeah, it's really, really fun. In the uh, pentathlon, what was the key to your success at the NCAA uh, indoor? Um, the key indoors for me was just not being too emotional. Um, coming back from the injury that I had last year, I had a lot. I didn't know what to expect of the season, so I didn't really know where to set my goals. And it's mm -hmm. a little bit weird going into a season, like not knowing like how are my jumps going to go or like, is yeah. it going to hurt? Or um, like, I've just had no idea like how bad, how good they could be. And so um, there were some meets earlier in the year uh, after high jump or long jump where I was like really, really upset. Um, and so just managing that. And I think I jumped like on, I think I jumped 181 at NCAAs, um, mm -hmm. which I was happy with, even though like last year me would have been like really upset with that. Um, so just kind of trusting myself and putting my foot down, um, was really important. And then, uh, long jump didn't go so well, but not letting that get to me and still finishing out strong in the 800 was key indoors. Did you take a break after the indoor season? No. Um, we did Texas relays, which was sure. like two weeks later. So, um, I mean, I think I had like two days off and then a couple of days in the pool, mm -hmm. um, before we like started training on the track again and then um, kind of just rode that peak into Texas relays knowing that okay this isn't going to be your best heptathlon of the year but we want to just see where we're at and get a score out of the way so we're already qualified for NCAAs um, and don't have to worry about that later so I could focus on USAs from there. How did you feel during the Texas relays? Honestly my body was kind of running on fumes um, and I was like, okay, we're just going to see like what happens. And my coaches just kept reminding me, like, we're just trying to qualify for NCAAs here. Like there's no expectations. And I think what normally does that is like 5,700 points to like safely get you into NCAAs. So they were yeah. just, like, just finish all the events. Um, and then I had some good events. I had some okay events. And then the score ended up being um, really good and close to the standard. And um, once I knew I was close to the standard, obviously I wish I would have gotten it, but um, I was really, really happy with that as an opener, especially knowing that um, like the hundred hurdles and the 200, all of those things sharpen up later in the outdoor season when you've had reps. Sure. So, yep. Talk about the U S championships. How did you feel going into that? Um, I was pretty nervous going into USA's because um, obviously at like, the equivalent meet Olympic trials last year, I didn't have the best experience. Yeah. And um, I knew that because of the new world ranking system, that if I didn't hit the standard, like I was not going to be on that team. So sure. it didn't matter if I won the meet by 500 points. Like I was, if I scored 64, 19, I was not going. So yeah. Um, I was really, really just focused on hitting that number because I know, like, I just knew this year, like that would be top three. And uh, I focused so much on that number that I think my technical events kind of showed, like, I think that's where I'm nervous, like the technique goes first. And so I kind of say with my coaches now, like I really ran myself onto that team with like a PR and the hundred hurdles, the 200 and the 800. And then yeah, pretty much every other event was just like, so, so, um, or not so good. So um, I was just happy to get through it and um, hit the standard. So, yeah. And then about five weeks later, you had the NCs take us through the NCs. Was everything coming together for you there? Yes. Um, I felt really good about that meet. And I um, think because of the schedule I made for myself with the 400 hurdles, I knew I was like, okay, every event, just one at a time. And it was just like checking off like a to-do list. And then I started putting together a really good multi, which was I'd ran 400 hurdles the night before the first day, like prelims and before going into the 800, like said, I didn't have 400 hurdles. I was probably, um, tracking for around a 6600 score and so I was a little bummed obviously that I didn't get to finish it out but uh, at the same time I was really excited that I knew I could put a really big one together and that I had another chance to do it at Worlds. So, okay, so let me get this right you did the 400 hurdle final then you came back into the 800. Mm -hmm. Okay can you express in words how you felt coming into the 800? I would have just, oh my God, that's just an insane double. <laughs> yeah, um, it was really, really hard and um, definitely a big mental test, I think. 
And I think it's funny because I don't think anybody knew what to expect. Cause like even my coaches, like we'd obviously done things in training to be yeah. like, okay, we know she'll finish, but I've never seen anyone do that. So I was like, okay, like what is the conversion after an all out 400 hurdles? Is it like plus 10 seconds to your 800, like plus five, like nobody really knew. And so I think I had 21 minutes. And so I just, I left my spikes on. I stayed down at the finish line. I had um, like an energy gel and some water and was just standing there trying to like get my heart rate back down. And um, I got on the line for the 800 and I was like still breathing really hard. And I was like, okay, this is going to be pretty bad. And I still, in my mind, I was like, I'm going to run 211. And I know some people are like, oh, like she didn't go for the record. And I was like, no, I did like 220, whatever it was. That's just all I had. And I definitely underestimated that double, but um, I'm glad that I did enough work in the first six events that I knew um, I had a big cushion. Talk to me about after the success you had with the U.S. champs and the NCAA champs, then you go to Eugene again, and you have the world champs, and you're meeting Nafi Thiam, you're meeting uh, uh, Johnson Thompson, you're meeting some of the best of the best in the HEP. Did, were you kind of fan struck hero struck or how did that go yes um the first few days when we got there like we go to the practice track and I was like oh my gosh like there's Nafi or there's so and so and um I obviously like grew up watching them and I've been watching them past um obviously last year at the Olympics like at home I watched the meet and um seeing them up close in person was like at first I was just like I cannot believe I'm even like entered in the same competition and then my coaches were like okay you've had like your day to fangirl but like the meet's coming up so like let's lock it in and um on meet days I do I kind of get like blinders on meet days and um so I'm just living in my own little world so I wasn't too worried about that day but yeah I definitely fangirled ahead of time but then yeah once the meet started I was kind of just focused on myself what is the biggest strength you have as a heptathlete? Um, I would like to think that my biggest strength is that I don't think there's an event that I have a super big, like glaring weakness where it's like, I can't get that one day. Yeah. And like, I know my throws are not the best right now. And I know long jumps like working its way up, but um, I feel like there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to throw way farther in shot put. And there's no reason why I shouldn't be able to throw way farther in javelin. And I don't feel like there's any event um, where I'm really like, Oh, okay. I can't do any better than that. And even the 800, like I know I'm probably a little bit closer there than in the other yeah. thing, but I still feel like um, my training age, I just think is pretty young. And um, I'm just now starting to grasp some of the like basics of the techniques. So um yeah, I, I guess just that I feel like I'm going to end up being um, pretty versatile across the board. What's the challenge for you with the long jump? Um, It was like one of the events I started latest. And uh-huh. so, and I grew up a high jumper. And so I think I just never understood how to run full speed and then sure. take off. Like I was always yeah. used to like kind of the graceful approach. And mm-hmm. um, a lot of times, like if you, even now still, even though it's a little bit better, I literally take off almost sideways. Like I kind of do like a little sidestep in the long jump because the only way that I know how to jump is from high jump. Like that's just what's natural to me. And Mm -hmm. um, so finally getting the confidence and the trust to like feel like, oh, this is what it feels like to run full speed down a runway and then take off from it, I think um, was the biggest thing this year. But there's still a little bit of hesitation and a lot of um, technical things to fix. What about the javelin? What's the challenge um, there? Yeah, the javelin is, I would say, like one of the most technical ones. And yeah, long jump and javelin were the two events that like I picked up um, latest. And so I think javelin, the, both the throws, I think, just take a long time to master, especially yeah. for Americans that didn't like grow up doing them when we were younger. So I think that's just like a training maturity thing. But I think I have the levers. I have really long arms and um, I am feel like I'm pretty powerful and explosive in my sprints and I don't see why um eventually once I get the form down that can't translate to farther javelin throws so um yeah I think it's just going to be like a two steps forward one step back thing when I work on the technique instead of um just muscling it so when you do the high jump do you see that as an event you pick points up in uh yes I think this year was a little bit weird um Mm -hmm. 
in that respect because the whole year I was just really struggling to get um, my confidence back. Yeah. Um, but I think I can jump higher. And I mean, like before my injury, I was like a 189 jumper and I didn't think I was near like my peak yet. And um, I think someday, hopefully I'll be able to jump in the 190s. That's definitely the goal. But um, at least um, soon, hopefully level out at like 186 all the time and then mm -hmm. uh, go from there. So when you come up to the 200, you go, OK, this is kind of my event. I'm going to make some people hurt. Or how do you feel when you get to the 200? A little bit. I guess the running, I kind of get like um, more of a <clears throat> fighter like mentality, I guess, where I'm just mm -hmm. like, I'm going to try to put as much distance between myself and everyone else as possible. And I guess like some people say, I, like I run angry, it looks like. And um, I guess I kind of do. And uh, running has like always been my favorite thing in track and field. And I like the really hard workouts and I... Um, yeah, I just enjoy like sprinting full speed. So yeah, going into the 200, I'm just like, okay, you need to put as much space as yourself between them as you can. And then if I pull away on the turn, then the whole home stretch, I'm just like, keep running away from them, keep running away from them. So yeah, yeah that's always nice to boost my points at the end of day one. How do you feel about the hundred hurdles now? Um, I feel okay with them this past year, but um, I was originally seven stepping to the first hurdle in previous years and then this year I went back to eight because in the fall um with my foot I couldn't push off the blocks very hard sure. so it, I couldn't make it to seven um but then by the end of the season I got so powerful that um I didn't have enough room with eight so if you look at the video at worlds I think I started like two feet behind the line um <laughs> so just because I was like I can't switch to seven in the middle of the season so we we're kind yeah. of just um making adjustments on the fly so that'll be something we're still talking about this year, um, either getting down a really good, well-rehearsed eight-step acceleration or switching to seven. Um, and either way, I think having a full fall with the same acceleration pattern is um, hopefully going to translate to faster times. So the world champs, you know, uh, it came down to the 800 for you. And thank God you didn't have a 400 hurdles before then. Um, <laughs> how did you feel during that 800? I felt confident because I was just trying to remind myself of all the 800s I'd ran that year and I just kept telling myself like I was strong and that I could do it but at the same time I knew everybody was like oh she has bronze locked up and I was like no you guys do not know who Adriana Sulik is like I know that girl and I know she's gonna give me um everything that she can and she did um so I was trying to um just keep telling myself to be confident but I knew um on that second lap like especially the back stretch when I really started to hurt I mm. was like they are coming um yeah I was just trying to fight as hard as I could and I think that 800 of all the multi 800s I did besides the 400 hurdle one but um I had the most taken out of me I think um over the course of the two days like I just felt pretty flat going into that 800 just the world schedule is very different early mornings, lot late nights, and it's just a lot more emotional. It's a bigger stage, everything. And so I think um, I kind of underestimated how much that would zap my legs by the end. So. What do you remember about the crowd cheering you on in the 800? Oh, that was like electric. Like sometimes if I watch like of the video, it like literally, I almost like tear up. Um, it was so cool. Um, the home crowd, like the whole meet, honestly, like they were just so loud. Like even i made my like starting height and high jump and it was like a roar. And I was just like, wow, like this is so sweet. And it was just felt awesome to be, feel like I had the whole crowd um, kind of behind me and like pushing me on um, to hopefully win a medal. And then in the 800, I was heard them on the home stretch and I was like, there's, you just can't get run down when you have like your whole home country cheering you on. Like, I was like, yeah. I'm just not going to let that happen. So um it was nice and definitely gave me an extra boost of energy at the end. Did you realize when you found out you'd won a medal that you were the first American to medal since 2001? I did. Um, America and like Team USA have been talking about that. And so I knew that going in. And um, obviously, like I wanted to be first, but uh, I mean, it wouldn't have surprised me if someone would have gotten a medal last year. Like we definitely have girls that were capable. So um, yeah, but that was a really cool stat especially since I was born in 2001 so I was like wow. oh cool we hadn't meddled since I was born so you've talked to Jackie Joyner Kersey a little bit mm -hmm. 
What'd you think about meeting her? Uh, Meeting her was like incredible. It was surreal, especially um, at the, I saw her at the end of day one. And then after day two, um, she, they showed me like a video of her cheering me on the home stretch of the 800. And um, she talked to me a little bit, gave me like some words of wisdom and encouragement. And um, to hear from her that like, she thinks that um, I can do this and like, I can keep going and have so much room to grow. um, Really just like, it was really validating to hear that from somebody that um, you look up to so much and um, honestly just like motivating because I'm like oh if Jackie like says I can do it then like I definitely can so um, it was super sweet of her and I was just like starstruck. <laughs> yeah I was at the Adidas um, uh, house and uh, was sitting with her and uh, Jim Jennings who's a guy who um, he's an Adidas uh, running product guy and I just said hey Jackie what do you think of Anna and he goes oh she's a real thing she's got the wheels, you know, and she can handle it. And, you know, that's a lot coming from her. And so I I thought you, uh, I thought you handled the stage pretty well. It's a big difference going from the NCAA to the, the global stage. And a lot of the Europeans, you know, they'll see these European, the the NCAA times, they go, Oh, you know, that's the NCAA. What can they do after that? But you've been able actually to do that. You know, you, you, you've taken it to the world stage. And now you're a professional athlete. So um, talk to me about um, uh, going pro with Adidas. Yeah. um, So when I finished Worlds, I knew pretty much that night, like um, there were like some agents talking to my parents and I know my coaches were kind of like, okay, guys, like let her have like a minute to have dinner with her family. And um, then I knew that night I was like, okay, like we've got a decision coming and um I wasn't set either way, but obviously earlier this year, like the plan was just stay in school. Um, hadn't really, um, thought much about it, but I knew I would evaluate an opportunity if it came. Mm -hmm. And then over the next few weeks, I, um, me and my parents just started talking to different agents and agents started talking to different shoe companies. And, um, we're just trying to see like what's out there, how that would fit with me. And, um, kind of just like see okay this is the opportunities that we're like really comparing and then make a decision after that and um super super thankful um to Paul and Adidas for giving me an amazing opportunity and one that uh, worked out really well but it was still a really hard decision because um obviously like for the University of Florida if you haven't seen us compete at meets like our team is so close and yeah um we love competing together and so i'm going to be really sad next year actually like not being at ncaa's but it just happened to be like the right timing for me and for my career and so like my coaches and i like they all said like they want the best for me and we we're just like it happened a little sooner than we were expecting but um everybody was still happy nonetheless so. how does and this is so early in your time and it's kind of hard to ask i guess but how has being a professional athlete changed things for you so far? Are you, are, are you, you still have the same training uh, culture, um, but you'll be competing differently in more, more, more global events. Is that correct? Yes. Um, so I guess I probably won't notice the day-to-day difference until competition season, which I think is good because um, going pro in itself is like a really big transition. So all the variables that I can keep the same, I think is really good. Um, So I'm going to be in the same place, be training with the same teammates, be um, coached by the same people. So right now things um, feel relatively similar, but um, looking ahead, like we're starting to build my schedule. Um, I'm really excited for the meets that I'm going to get to compete in and uh, get the chance to see the world and go to meets like Gotsis that I've like always had on my bucket list. And yeah, indoors we're looking at um either there's like a france in estonia there's two pence and so i'll probably do one of those i'm not sure which one yet um so i'm excited to be able to have the chance to do that and hopefully run some individual events and form hurdles on the diamond league and um, be able to extend my season a little bit farther because um after worlds this year like i was done i needed to rest so oh sure Um, yep (laughs) how many times did you competed this season did you keep track of all your competitions during the during the year? I didn't, but I remember somebody saying uh, the eight hundred was my like seventy sixth event of the year. Wow! But I don't remember 
that was like on Twitter somewhere. So it yeah, was I thought I saw seventy six as well. I'll have to talk to the some of the real geeks and see what I can find out, and uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll put that up. Okay, so I'm going to put you in a an auditorium, and you've got a group of um, young high school girls who are competing in sports. What are you going to tell them about competing in sports and why you love track and field? I would say um, to keep competing in sports. I think that's um, a really big thing for girls. I think the retention rate is probably a little bit lower than it is for boys. So just to keep going. And even though I think a lot of things are set up for men's sports, um, not to let that discourage you and not to let that make you feel like what you're doing is any less um, valuable or any less hard or any less of an achievement. And I would highly recommend um, trying track and field to anybody, even though it might not end up being your thing. I think um, it's a sport that teaches you a lot. And I think all sports do, but being an individual sport, um, I think it's just a lot more of a reflective journey to master an event, um, competing against yourself in PRs. And I, it's so measurable that uh, some other team sports, like there's small aspects that are similar, but um, I just don't really think you it requires the same amount of self-growth um, in like such a short period of time. And I think no matter what sport you took that into, it would probably help you if you end up picking soccer, end up picking volleyball. So yeah, I would definitely recommend um, trying track to everybody. Okay. Now I'm going to make you the producer of NBC sports for a day. Um, and how would you tell the story of the multi-events on uh, TV? So non-track fans can understand and appreciate it what would you add what do you think is missing from the coverage when we cover the heptathlon and we cover the decathlon yeah um i think there's a little bit too much focus on who's winning each individual event when um which i think can be confusing that it's not like who wins the most events is the winner um so really just emphasizing like every time that after the commercial break, like this is about who's the most well-rounded athlete and like this is how it's measured. I think it could help to explain the point table a little bit. And then mm -hmm. um, throughout the competition, be comparing marks to people's um, personal best series because that's what really matters. If um, somebody runs a really slow hurdles time, like relatively to everybody else, but that's what they always run. Um, and then the TV is just saying like, oh, they're in like eighth place right now. Like that doesn't do much for the audience to know like, oh, they're actually on pace to still medal. So um, just, I guess, yeah, um, keeping track of the PR series um, along with the running point totals. But I really like that world's how in the 800, they have like the live points as we were running. I thought that was mm -hmm. really so more things like that. If you were not doing the heptathlon or the 400 hurdles, what event would you do in track and field? I think I would do the open four or the open eight. Yeah, which I guess open eight might be like cheating of an answer, but um, <laughs> no, that's yeah, cool. Just the running or the two, two and the four, maybe. Um, which, yeah, hopefully I'll get to run a few of those as well this year. So now your boyfriend plays tennis? Yes. Yep. He's a tennis player. Do you, you get to watch some of his competitions as well? Yeah. Um, this past year was nice because we were both still in college. So um, he had some meets or he had some matches here and I had meets here so we could see each other then. And then That's cool. Uh, during my break after Worlds, I went home for a little and then I kind of hopped around with him to some of the tournaments that he was at. So it was really fun just to get to like travel a little bit, get out of Gainesville and um, get to go watch his pro events um, so I got to go to like the Atlanta Open I saw a tournament in Chicago which is also where my sister lives so that was fun and then I went to the U.S. Open um, as Ooh. well so, yeah. what's it like watching other sports when you're not competing it's like different I think I you kind of understand like the mental side of it like I'm kind of like looking at things and I'm like oh, okay like I've felt like that in a situation before too and sure um, just seeing how people handle things um, is really interesting. And, um, actually like, I think I get more nervous watching than doing. So I was like, I think I'm getting a little bit of taste of my own medicine of what my parents are going through, like sitting in the stands, like sitting, watching, um, big points in a tennis match. So, um, yeah. Very I used to hang out with Ashton Eaton a little bit and his coach, Harry Mara, and was over at the Commonwealth games while Ashton was watching Brianna compete and, 
I never seen a guy more nervous, man. I mean, and, and I would see him and all, I saw him in every one of his decathlons and I would tease him afterwards. I said, well, what's the deal? And he goes, Oh, I get so nervous watching her, you know? And cause you know, you, you want the person you care for to perform well and stuff like that. Yeah. And you can't do anything versus like when I'm competing, I'm like, okay, like it's in my hands. Do you see yourself going into coaching down the road? I haven't really thought too much about it, but um, I'm open to it right now. I think um, I'm focused on just, um, you know, figuring out this transition, but sure. um, then I'll start evaluating, you know, what's next or if there's anything I want to pick up along the way, maybe coaching while I'm um, a pro. So probably won't seriously consider it until I'm done with my degree, but um, yeah, I would definitely be open to it. And I've always been really interested in like the science behind the training that we do and always mm-hmm. asking my coaches lots of questions. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely a very interesting field. So, What's your degree in? I'm a finance major. Oh, cool. Yep. Awesome. Well, you have a lot to, to read about now with the crazy economy and all that stuff too. So, yes. So Anna, you have survived 35 minutes with me and it's actually been recorded. So thank you so much. Um, and have a lovely weekend. Um, thanks again for all your great performances this year and your um, honesty. And it's a lot of fun to talk with you. So thank you again. Um, my best to your family and your coaching staff. I get a kick out of seeing uh, the pictures from uh, Florida when you guys, you know, the NCAA pictures are just classic. They're just, and there's a picture of Coach Holloway with one of your sprinters, and he is giving him a look like, yeah, you really shouldn't be doing that right now. And oh, yes, <laughs> totally loved that picture. It was like one of my favorites. So it, uh, it kind of keeps it fun. So yeah. have a great weekend. Uh, This is Larry Eater with Run, Blog, Run with Anna Hall. She is the world championship bronze medalist, heptathlon, NCAA champion, indoor and out in multi-events, and uh, and now an Adidas-sponsored athlete. Anna, thank you so much. Thank you.